and welcome to Light Time in Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. Oh yeah! I am your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about Dangerous Medicine. Not a good title for SEO, by the way, because people googling Dangerous Medicine are probably looking for help with their medicine. Dangerous Medicine stars Leanne Van Mole. It's a hard name to say. Chris Chimperman, Chris Chimperman, my girl Meredith Thomas, and Chloe Stafford. On the show, either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no thank you. So what are we going to do to Dangerous Medicine? Pour it up! Now, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, spoilers ahead, obviously... You're going to want to hit pause and come on back because I'm about to do a quick little recap starting now. The movie starts out with an out of context flashback. I'm just going to lay it all out there for you at the top because it doesn't really matter. We know the caretaker is obsessive. We saw the preview. There is no mystery here. Daphne is running through the woods from the siblings of her husband who is disabled. The siblings found her attempting to saw off his arm. Daphne gets away and starts her life over, evading the police or any consequences. A few months later, Tony, a hunky in a teen way track star, celebrates his full ride scholarship to a college of his dreams. His girlfriend Jasmine also wants to get into college and reads a text while driving. It's from an admissions counselor and gets them into a car accident. Don't text and drive, folks. Tony wakes up in the hospital and doesn't really realize that he's paralyzed. (laughs) Whatever dope they gave me is totally working. I can barely feel my legs. Then when he does, it gets really sad. Sweetheart. No, no, it's not. It's not right. Please stop. Please stop it. Come on, come on. It's gonna be okay. What are you telling me? It's gonna be okay. My legs not. Please, shh. Will you stop shushing me? Daphne sees a job posting online and calls to offer her services. Her services include spotting Tony while he works out, rubbing his legs down with oil, and touching his penis while giving him a bath. She repeatedly calls Tony, Kyle. Jasmine catches them in a compromising position and isn't too concerned. She casually mentions an experimental treatment to reverse Tony's paralysis. Pretty sure that doesn't exist, but we'll go with it. Daphne doesn't take it well. Don't you take him from me. 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 Determined to get rid of Jasmine, Daphne badmouths her at dinner and tries to seduce Tony with a massage and a sexy midriff. None of that works to break up the couple. So Daphne breaks into Jasmine's house, evades her father, who is carrying a bat, and sends a breakup text from Jasmine's phone questioning Tony's manhood. Ellen, Tony's mom, played by my favorite Lifetime actress of 2021, Meredith Thomas, realizes that Daphne neglected to tell her about an appointment with a revolutionary doctor. Ellen fires Daphne on the spot. A neighbor who makes gross-looking sandwiches takes care of Tony. Daphne wants to make the caretaker look neglectful and breaks into Tony's house while he's sleeping. Dressed in a sexy burglar costume, Daphne creates a gas link and almost kills Tony. Then, the next morning, she saves him in front of the whole neighborhood. Ellen is reluctant to give Daphne her job back, but she did save her son, so okay, fine. The fancy surgery is booked, and Daphne can't have that. She poses as a nurse, not a sexy nurse, and kills the doctor. He doesn't really care. Nurse? Yeah. Hi, who are you? I'm Phoebe from the lab. Right. This guy's in the lab. can get it right. You're not going to take him from me. Tony is bummed his surgery is canceled and not that the doctor is dead. Daphne makes him feel better by sleeping with him. Alan catches them together and fires the caretaker again. Meanwhile, Jasmine sees photos of Tony with Daphne and does some research on her arm tattoo. 
Using some translating software, Jasmine learns that the tattoo says Kyle. She finds everyone named Kyle in town and gets caught snooping. She hides behind a couch and has to listen to Tony and Daphne have phone sex. Jasmine meets with Kyle and learns about the chopping off of the arms thing. She calls Tony and tries to warn him, but of course it's too late because Daphne has lost it. She screams at Tony and then chloroforms him and casually looks up how to amputate an arm. The amateur surgery is cut short when Jasmine shows up to stop Daphne. After a really good delivery of the line, Okay, bitch. Jasmine gets knocked out. Ellen finally comes and rescues her son. Tony eventually gets his surgery and runs on the track while Jasmine and Ellen cheer him on. And that is Dangerous Medicine. Wow. This movie was crazy. We knew it was going to be a devious caretaker taking care of this 18-year-old hunky hunk in a teen way hunky hunk. And it really was just about elevating and escalating the stakes. There was a little bit of flashback stuff and backstory. And normally I am like into the context of backstory, but not when it's doled out like a mystery. So I would have just cut all that and just let this really go wild because it's the over the topness that really makes it fun and really makes it lifetime. When Daphne is giving Tony a handjob in the bathtub and his girlfriend walks in and doesn't give a fuck, that's camp. That's hilarious. The two younger actors, Tony and Jessica, I really liked them. I thought they were really fun. Also, I like that no one really blamed Jasmine for the accident. I mean, sure, she was texting and driving, and you really shouldn't text and drive, but no one made Jasmine feel bad. Well, I guess Daphne did. And we gotta talk about Meredith Thomas as Ellen. She's been in so many Lifetime movies this year, and she really is the Where's Waldo, like I said in my recap. I mean, the woman's been in over a hundred movies, so she's definitely gonna pop up in Lifetime movie every now and then. Here's just a few titles she's been in. The Wrong Wedding Planner, The Wrong Stepfather, The Wrong Valentine, Anonymous Killers, The Wrong Mr. Right, Killer Advice, and Dangerous Medicine. I just think she's great. That's it. And now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where I talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. We only had one actor who was a POC, that's Jessica, played by Chloe Strafford. I like that she was the girlfriend and you know, was just in the movie. We could have had more representation, of course. One thing that would have taken this movie over the top for me, been like an instant classic, would having the character of Kyle be played by an actor who's in a wheelchair or an actor who is disabled. We could have cast an actor who is disabled to be more inclusive and to get some realness to the story, that would be a great way to do it. I hope they at least consulted someone on set or something. But yeah, let's try to do that. I think that wraps it up for today's episode. If you want more Lifetime Uncourt, you can follow our website, lifetimeuncourt.com. Don't forget to follow me at Patrick Miguel or the show at Lifetime Uncourt. You can leave a comment below and like this video. Tell us a movie you want us to cover, or just say hi. Don't forget to donate to our Ko-fi page. We would love some donations, and it just helps make this a little more fun, because this one is not free. It's not. All this banging behind me, I have to end this video, and my hair. Oh my God.